Today, CPU and GPU performance are being hurt by AI. Bad news for AMD's future APUs, release date for Intel's next-gen Battle Mage, and AMD confirms Ryzen 9000. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, it looks like AI fever is now hurting future GPU and CPU performance. Over the last few months, hardware makers have been freaking out about AI PCs, clearly getting excited for the potential that AI can bring to the desktop market. We pretty well know that AMD essentially rushed out their Ryzen 8000 mobile parts just to add a bit more AI performance, and Intel is promising more tops performance to come. But one company seems to be really excited for the potential of AI, and that's that's Microsoft. Not too long ago, they announced the Copilot key, which would be the first change to the Windows keyboard layout in 30 years. Then we started hearing rumors about Microsoft allowing Copilot to run locally on your PC instead of just in the cloud, and Intel basically confirmed that AI PCs require at least 40 tops of performance. Well, according to a new report from WCC AppTech, AMD's Strix Point APUs were originally said to be very different from what they will be now. Specifically, the silicon that's now being used by the AI chip was originally going to be a large system level cache that would have made the integrated GPU and CPU faster. And if this is true, one can safely assume that Intel is doing something similar with their CPUs. Basically, AI is hurting future GPU and CPU performance. And here I'd really just like to ask, do you think it's going to be worth the trade-off? Let me know down in the comments below. But first, I know I talk about them a lot, but it's free to try out. So there's no reason not to. I'm of course talking about the sponsor of today's video. Brilliant. The one place I trust to learn anything new in computer science or really anything in the STEM field. Whether it's coding, how large language models that power AI works, quantum computing, and the list goes on. But here's the thing. When you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld or use the QR code, you can try it out for free yourself with the 30-day free trial. That way you can find out exactly why I love the way Brilliant teaches me. How they get me to do it myself with their fun and engaging puzzles instead of just reading or memorizing a bunch of stuff. It's the way I love to learn and I know you'll love it too. So don't wait any longer and visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld for your free trial. Plus, when you decide you love it, you'll get 20% off their premium membership for life. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermeld or use the QR code. Next up for today, we've heard about AMD's upcoming RDNA 3.5 or RDNA 3 Plus, whatever you want to call it, for quite a while now. And given the name, it's clearly their stopgap graphics architecture between RDNA 3 and RDNA 4. And it's said to be in pretty much every next-gen APU from AMD. I'm talking Strix Point, Halo, Kraken, and more. Well, according to a known leaker online, RDNA 3 Plus is set to be the default iGPU and APUs for a long time. Specifically, we're talking at least 2027. Now, this isn't the first time we've seen this before. In fact, if you've been following the industry for really any amount of time, you know that Vega was used for AMD's integrated graphics all the way up until Ryzen 6000 APUs, where they immediately jumped to their RDNA 2 architecture. And Vega was still used on desktop APUs until the just released Ryzen 8000 G series. Plus, let's not forget that all rumors point to their RDNA 4 series being nothing but a mid-range release. So clearly we won't see some giant and performance jump in the high end. Basically, this isn't new for AMD, but that obviously doesn't make it any better. At the end of the day, if this is true, we likely won't see much of a jump in iGPU performance for quite a while. And next up, we finally have a release date for Intel's next-gen discrete GPUs, codenamed Battle Mage. The story originally comes from this year's Embedded World Conference. Now, before I get to the main part of the story, Intel did actually announce their first embedded system GPUs for edge computing. These are basically on their Alchemist GPU architecture, and the company announced six products total, with three being their embedded parts. And companies have already announced products with the GPUs. They support AI acceleration, 
information, visual computing, and media processing, so they can do quite a bit. But ultimately, they're nothing to write home about given they're still based on Intel's first-gen Alchemist. Which brings me to the interesting part of the story. According to the German outlet Computer Base, who spoke with insiders in the industry at the Embedded World Conference, and according to them, Intel is planning to release their next-gen Battle Mage before this year's Black Friday. Of course, that's not too surprising given the importance of Black Friday in the US, but that also puts it right at the same time of Nvidia and AMD's next-gen GPUs, meaning it could simply be too late, though it obviously depends on how well they can compete. I think it's safe to say that we won't see any real competition on the high end, but all rumors point to AMD sticking to the mid-range market as well. Ultimately, I think it's going to be a tough battle ahead, but obviously competition is always great, especially when we're talking price. And lastly for today, AMD finally confirmed their upcoming Ryzen 9000 CPUs. For quite a while now, numerous leakers and outlets have speculated that AMD's next-gen desktop CPUs will in fact be their 9000 series. And it definitely seems to be the case, given AMD already announced Ryzen 8000 for notebooks. Of course, they've released notebook CPUs with the same name as desktop before, but their 8000 series is still based on Zen 4, so it would be odd to release their Zen 5 products under the same name. Not to mention the fact that AMD also released Ryzen 8000 G APUs on desktop, once again still based on Zen 4. And most recently we saw the release of their 8000 F series of CPUs, also made for desktop. But this has mostly been speculation. Until now. In a new tweet from known leaker HXL, he discovered something in AMD's most recent chipset driver. This one was distributed by Zeus for their X670E Crosshair Hero motherboard. The driver includes both desktop and notebook CPU support, given it's a pretty big software package. That includes Ryzen 6000, the 7040 series, as well as their 8000 chips. But it also includes support for Ryzen 9000. More specifically, this adds the PMF driver or Platform Management Framework, which includes the framework for managing power, performance, and all that good stuff. So it's the start of support being added for their next-gen CPUs, which means AMD is gearing up for a release, and we should be able to expect it in the coming months. Let's just hope the performance boost is enough to warrant jumping straight to the 9000 series. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for next-gen Ryzen 9000 CPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day!